Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing magnetospheres, and I guess more specifically, magnetospheres of exoplanets potentially similar to our own Earth. With the question being really simple, is our planet unique in its ability to produce the magnetosphere, or can other terrestrial planets, specifically planets that are not Earth or not planets in the solar system, possess magnetosphere as well? With this question being important for obvious reasons, planet Mars. We know that Mars today very likely looks like this because it did not have powerful enough magnetosphere. Whereas Earth does, and so it's able to preserve both water and the atmosphere. And although in the past we've discussed magnetospheres detected around very large planets, very often hot Jupiters, or even brown dwarfs in their own star systems, even without an actual star, this question has never been answered in regards to terrestrial planets, planets like Earth, but in other star systems. Or at least up until very recently. Because it looks like we now have at least one initial sign that a terrestrial planet orbiting a relatively close star potentially has magnetosphere after all. And potentially a very powerful one. And so let's discuss what exactly was discovered here, how it was found, and what this means for the future of astronomy. But I guess first, let's start with the star and the star system where all of this was discovered. This is actually a relatively close system to us. It's about 12 light years away, or about 4 times as far as the nearest star Proxima Centauri. And as you can see, it contains 3 known exoplanets. The star is known as YZ Ceti, located in the constellation of Cetus, or basically the constellation of Whale. But even though it's really close to us, it's practically invisible using any optical telescope, unless it's extremely powerful. And that's because it produces less than 2% of optical light compared to the Sun, and because this is basically a red dwarf. And the thing about red dwarfs is that, statistically, they're more likely to contain terrestrial planets, and those planets are also more likely to be very, very close to the star, interacting with the star in the process. And the three planets discovered here are extremely similar in mass to planet Earth. The closest planet is actually the smallest at 0.7 masses of planet Earth, the second planet is a little bit more massive at 1.14 masses of planet Earth, and the last planet is about 1.1 masses of planet Earth. With all three relatively close to the star as well, with orbital periods between 2 and 4.5 and days. And all three are maybe a little bit too close to the star to potentially host liquid water. Even the farthest planet potentially has temperatures of at least 90 degrees Celsius on the surface, very likely much higher especially if it possesses atmosphere that increases the greenhouse effect. But because O3 are so similar to our own planet in terms of mass, and because they are so close to the star, and also on top of that because the star system is so close as well, it essentially provides a perfect laboratory to study the effects of these planets on the star, and to thus potentially discover what sort of unusual properties these planets might have in regards to, for example, magnetospheres. And in the past, from some of the previous papers, the scientists realized that there's actually a way for us to use observations using radio telescopes to possibly find effects of the magnetosphere around distant objects. For example, one exoplanet, HAT P11, orbits so close to the star and provides so many different effects on the star, that in the past the scientists almost definitively confirmed that this very very hot gas giant most likely contains a relatively powerful magnetosphere that then interacts with the star and produces very specific radio emissions. But in this case, the scientists are not really looking at planets themselves. Because of the distances, they can only actually see what's happening on the star. And so in this case, by looking at radio emissions coming from YZ Ceti, the scientists discovered something really strange. Very powerful bursts of radio energy that seem to have happened at least twice, and seem to be correlated with the orbit of that closest planet around the star. Which by the way takes approximately two days. Or basically, they've observed what's known as the stellar radio waves that seem to increase dramatically when this planet was in a certain part of the orbit around the star. And for this to be visible from planet Earth, these emissions had to be super powerful. And more importantly, to even generate these emissions, you have to have some kind of a magnetic interaction with another object. But I guess more intriguingly, the emissions coming from this object are super similar to what we actually see coming from Jupiter when Io interacts with Jupiter's magnetosphere. This particular study was previously used to discover very similar radio emissions from other, much larger planets in a distance. And intriguingly, we know that because of this interaction, Io tends to form a very specific footprint visible in the aurora in the northern hemisphere of Jupiter. Other moons form something as well, but it's not as easily visible. 
which basically suggests that in this case, at this particular star very likely experienced its own aurora as well. Aurora that were probably invisible in optical light, but very likely extremely easily visible in radio light. And that's because the star is just too bright for any aurora to be physically visible, but the radio light produced by these aurora would be much brighter and thus much easier visible. And what this implies is that this planet very likely has a very powerful magnetic field and it basically interacts with the magnetosphere of the star itself. And just like Io, that produces these effects by moving through the magnetosphere of Jupiter, leaving behind certain marks in the aurora, it looks like this is exactly what's happening here as well. In essence, producing what the scientists refer to as extrasolar space weather. And though on planet Earth, the aurora are produced in the upper atmosphere and are not actually visible on the Sun, because of the overall proximity of the planet to the star and the direct interaction between their magnetospheres, the aurora seem to be produced on the star as well as potentially the planet as long as it has some kind of an atmosphere. At the moment it's unknown whether it does have an atmosphere because unfortunately unlike other planetary systems, in this star system the planets do not pass in front of a star so they don't actually allow us to see the little shadows that would allow us to study the atmosphere and so answering the atmospheric question is not going to be possible until later. But because in this case it produces a very specific extremely strong polarized light, radio light that's detectable every time the planet is in a certain position around the star, some of these questions could be answered in the future once there are more models investigating exactly what's happening around the star system and how this planet affects the star. In other words, by detecting some of these radio emissions, some of the questions in regards to the type of planet this is might be answered in the future. Although in this case, it's also important to understand that this is not a particularly good candidate for habitable planets. This is also what's known as a flare star. A star with quite a lot of attitude. These tend to produce ridiculously powerful stellar flares that are often much more powerful than anything our sun can produce. And these planets are also very close to the star, so in theory, any planet here would be stripped of pretty much anything. Which means that studying the surfaces of these planets and trying to figure out what's happening around the star system is actually one of the more intriguing questions for future astronomy. Intriguingly, the star system is also very very close to another really famous and extremely exciting star system known as Tau Ceti, we've talked about the system in one of the previous videos in the description, that contains several very exciting planets with at least a few potentially habitable as well. And so it just so happens that these two stars are actually really really close to one another. The distance between them is about one and a half light years. But I guess for now that's pretty much all we know about this star system and what the scientists were able to discover here. The actual discovery is pretty exciting because if confirmed, this will be the first ever exoplanet, terrestrial exoplanet, with a confirmed magnetosphere that seems to interact with the star itself. And because this is not a gas giant but a terrestrial planet, and because this planet is also really close to us, statistically it implies that many of these planets would very likely have very similar conditions. Suggesting of course that unlike in the solar system, having a powerful magnetosphere might be extremely common after all. Which is of course a really important question to answer if we ever want to find some kind of a habitable and potentially livable exoplanet with maybe even complex life on its surface. But we'll talk more about this in some of the future videos. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.